no airbrush, lots of dry brush in, blah, blah, blah. This will be fun. I will screw up. Let's go. All right, it's Imperial Fist time. They're not going to be showroom ready, Imperial Fists. Quite a lot of the time when people ask for Imperial Fists, they ask them super weathered. So that is going to be the subject of this tutorial. I think a really tempting prospect for it because they can look so clean and crisp and fresh in their yellow. Ours is not like that. Ours has been through the wars. Hopefully you like how he looks. If you want to see how to do it, this is the tutorial for you. So we're going to go through a few key aspects. We're doing some pre-shading with stippling. Um, then we put a filter over again with stippling. You can do all of this tutorial with an airbrush, weirdly, um, but we're not using an airbrush. So even if you're an airbrush, you can watch this tutorial, take all the steps and apply them with an airbrush or mix it up with airbrush and dry brush. I quite like the stippling because you end up with a load of variation. And as you'll see from the final job, our guy does not look like he's like smooth, pristine and perfect at all. So if you're interested in seeing how to achieve that type of effect, let's jump in. All right, so I've had a look at the pictures. I've looked pretty hard, thought pretty hard. I think this is kind of the sequence we're going to be going for. I'm not going to nuance it purple. If you want to see a nuanced purple one, check out our other Imperial Fist video. I'll link it below. Um, from the shadows, we're going to go kind of a plain, warm, very, very tired and uh, battered. He'll have been in the wars and uh, this is what you go with. So we're going to start from the scrag brown base. You can stipple that, you can layer it on, you can airbrush it, you can dry brush it. doesn't matter at all, but you need a flat scrag brown base for your model. Okay, so we have our scrag brown guy. Doesn't matter how you achieve that, you don't have to be too obsessive about it at all. Um, you know, if the if the deep dark recesses you couldn't reach, um, that's fine. But, you know, it's gotta be a smooth coat. So if it takes two coats, that's fine. Ironically, we're not gonna worry too much about the raised areas either because we're about to do some pretty weird stuff there. So I've got a small here and we're gonna be doing some very weird looking pre-highlighting. So. What you're going to need at this point is not a base white, not a thick white. So anything that says base or is known for being super heavy coverage, we're going to avoid because we don't want to put down unwanted texture that you often get or chalkiness from them. So grab whatever paint you've got that's like a layer. Um, the coverage doesn't have to be insane. That's not what we're worried about here. Grab a layer white paint or just a standard white paint and acrylic from any brand that you like. When in doubt, if there's any areas that you find particularly difficult, like you might not quite know what to do with this step, bit of this armor, you can always just revert to heavy dry brushing and get a coat down there. So this is over brushing. We're going to be combining the two. Okay, I've got some water in the dampening pad. So I'm going to be using white scar. I've not seen some use for a while. Uh, this type of use is absolutely perfect though. Hopefully it's still in good order. Don't saturate your brush too much. Drag it away from the bristles when you spread it out on the palette. What I'm going to do, go to our dampening pad for some water. Now you can approach this two ways. You can overbrush it. Uh, if you've watched the slap chop video, that's overbrushing. Uh, the first step of that. We're going to try and stipple it in selective areas though. And I'm going to imagine that my model is lit from above. And those are the areas we're going to pick. So if you can see that lovely kind of glow at the top of his shoulder pad, that's the type of effect that we're going to look to emulate. I haven't glued these on because I like the fact that they don't cover the chest, so I'll hold them still. And we're going to do some stuff that doesn't look very delicate whatsoever. We're going to do it all over in the upwards facing bits of the model or the bits that catch the light the best. You can take a picture of your model when it's primed black under a lamp, and that's a perfect way to get a really good light reference for this type of stuff. If you want to make your bristles narrower, you can just pinch them. I don't know what color these are going to be yet, but it'll be fine. So we're going to do that all over the model. Anywhere, any upwards facing areas, we're using a small, so it's quite delicate. And if in doubt, again, you can look to your reference or hold it under your lamp and make a call there. So for example, these shin pads, the area that's hitting it the most or being hit by it the most is actually towards the bottom where that angle starts changing. And then it's kind of darker and shaded there. So we're going to do that all over and we'll come back and have a look what that looks like. You can use mine as a color reference if you like. Now, along with that, this is optional. You can pop it in if you want. You can take a darker color. I'm just going to use Rhinox Hide. I've got an extra small here. And if we take the shoulder pad as an example, 
and I pick areas that I'd like to be darker. Again, you've got your life reference, light reference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stipple fade them towards the bottom. So what I mean by that is we're gonna pop down an initial row, fairly heavy pressure, and then lightly we'll fade it up. Now, basically you want to leave some of your mid-tone showing through. So the entire model is mid-tone, this is a lighter tone, this is our shade. You want to fade from this to this and have this fade from that to that. If you're worried about smaller parts like this arm, don't be that actually by far the easiest. Just treat it like a tube, because it is. So from underneath, we put down a heavier layer, then dilute a bit. Fade that from the bottom, and then you can do that with the lighter color towards the top. It's actually pretty easy, very forgiving, and surprisingly fast. Okay, so let's be honest, this looks, this looks like someone's bad attempt at my first NMM, but uh, that's okay. So it's kind of done now, pop them together for the pre-shading steps. I'm gonna quickly whisk over and any little bits of dust that we've got collected anywhere, because we've been doing a lot of dry brushing with the, um, with the white, uh, we're gonna dust them off now. So get them out of the recesses, and uh, give you guys a little bit of a dusting. Get there in the nooks and crannies. You can always blast it with an airbrush without letting any paint out, obviously. Okay, so I tatted this because honestly I wasn't sure it's was gonna work, but it looks great, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're taking our flash kits and we're gonna be using stippling to cover the entire thing basically with a glaze. Now you could use a contrast here and you get a similar effect be a, a little bit more transparent so you'd see more of the work we've put in previously. We're just using a pretty light yellow which doesn't have crazy high coverage to achieve it. But uh, yeah, you could absolutely use a contrast paint if you wanted. And I was prepared to if it didn't work, but it has worked, so we're okay. So what we're doing is using moisture from the dampening pad, making sure we've not got too much paint on our brush, too much water. If you use the same brush for the white, you might keep flex in it. You could see a few leaving my brush there. So uh, do make sure that you clean out the brush. It's more of a thing if you've just come from white because white tends to have bits in it a little bit more than other colors do. So let's take your flash kits. Gonna take a tiny amount. Really, I should have put this on the palette. Work it into the brush, but you're working away from it. So you're pushing it in, but you're not scooping up loads of paint. Make sure it's dilute, which it is. And then starting in the section that's gonna be the brightest always, we're just going to stipple it on. Get away with kind of wiping it a bit if you like, depending on what you want to do. I'm going to stipple it though all over. Like literally every single part of this model is getting that treatment. It'll practically take one coat. You're going for transparent anyway. And of course, where there's white, it's going to show up really truly and brilliantly and bright. And where it's darker, you'll get a little bit more of our previous steps so showing through. So that all over the model. If you prefer to glaze this or use the contrast, you absolutely can. This is quite forgiving though, and it's quite fun. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate this to you on a solo shoulder pad, and we're gonna pretend that's not because of a load of footage getting lost. This should actually be really helpful though. So here we've got an exaggerated version. What I've done is I've put down a particularly unsubtle white splodge at the top, and you know, it's not delicate stippling that we've got down below either. Big dark rhinoxide splodges there. So what I wanna do, and what I've got the opportunity to do, now I'm showing this to you separately, is show you exactly how unsubtle uh, you can be underneath this. And then the yellow just kind of evens everything out and you end up with a little bit of natural variance in there, but it looks fine, especially on something that we're gonna be chipping a lot and you know, just making look old and knackered. So we've got the dampening pad. It's gonna introduce a little bit of moisture into the mix. And you can go about this two ways. You can do it with wiping or you can do it dabbing with stippling. I'm probably gonna start with stippling, safety first. Got our paint on our pad. Now Flash Gets Yellow doesn't have incredibly amazing coverage and that's kind of helpful for us. So you're better off starting to dilute rather than anything else. I'll show you the difference between wiping. Wiping you can get streaks, stippling kind of evens itself out. So we started off far too subtle there. That's much better than the other way though. You can wipe it off quickly, but uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more moisture involved. A little bit more paint. 
that's looking good. You can see it's, it's kind of filtering my hand quite nicely anyway, so we should be good whatever we do here. And then it's just a matter of building it up with a couple of transparent layers. Obviously, where you go over the white, it's gonna it's gonna turn yellow pretty much instantly. So you can get away with probably doing like you know one or two steps here, and maybe need a couple more down there. I'll uh, I'll speed things up and uh, drop the subtlety. Got a bit more on the brush, but it's still very dilute. It's quite a strong color, but it doesn't have incredibly good coverage. So if we step all this mix all over. We're still keeping that variation underneath. So you can do that once. I tend to get down a all right coat and then just go in once I'm less worried about things with the smushing and the smearing. We'll let that dry and I'll show you that now. So same brush, we've not changed anything. Just gonna go in here and you can see it building up the yellow more readily now. So it's up to you how far you wanna go with this. Um, you can use it more subtly, less subtly, um, but while you're going over the model, you know, all over it, by the time you've done one layer from foot to head, you can go back to the foot again and do the second. So two or three quick passes, uh, you can speed it up if you want. You can dab it on, you can wipe it on. However you like to get this down is absolutely fine. Of course, if you want to airbrush it, if you've got an airbrush, you can do that too. We're not going for perfection. It's quite difficult, but you know, for me, that's nearly at the point where I'd leave it now. Because what we're gonna do is add on a load of other stuff, jump to finish model, and it's just gonna get hidden underneath. All that variation is gonna get hidden behind scratches and stuff and get pushed to the foreground, but we're still gonna keep the uh, the panels kind of getting, uh, going from light to dark. They're getting washed and stuff. So do not worry about this not looking perfect. I could go with that now and it'd be absolutely fine. So just to show you if you're really impatient and you, you don't want to wait around one bit. Ideally clean the black off your brush first, obviously. There we go. It's quite a helpful paint for it. It's kind of a it's kind of an oily paint, and as a result, you can do filtery stuff with it quite easily. Okay, so contrast hacking time. Now, I didn't realize that flash kits has got some aspects of green in it, or at least when you put it over other darker colors, they you can see here, it seems to lean towards a little bit of a limey color, especially over black. So what we're gonna try and do in the shaded areas where we don't want it to look greenish, is we're gonna grab a contrast, and I've picked one that's got a fair bit of red in it. The reason for that is, here's green on the color wheel. If you wanna counter it, red. Tested the contrast down here, it doesn't look too bad over the yellow at all. And so hopefully with us leaving more of it in the shaded areas, we should get a pretty cool result and it should neuter that green a little. I'm gonna be one of the Simpsons by the end of this. Anyway, yep, we're gonna give it a quick varnish and then we're gonna put contrast all over it and remove it pretty fast, leaving it mainly in the recesses. Okay, so a little lamium medium. You can use contrast medium. I really don't think it matters too much. bias layer of flesh, make sure you've shaken it. One part, two parts, we're about even in the mix. Let's see if it's strong enough. I'm gonna pick somewhere small and cute with small details. Cool. And that's doing exactly what I wanted. Looks like it's knocked the green out as I knock the camera. Now, it's important to not let it pull. You know the jam by now if you've watched the channel before. If you're new to the channel, you want to control your contrast and your washes. You don't want to just passively blob them there and let them do whatever they like because they'll do bad things if they're left to their own devices. So work with gravity. Don't change the orientation of your model too much. So just keep it at its default orientation. Try not to turn it sideways often or stuff like that because the moment you start tipping those paints around, if they've begun setting, they'll start going another direction. Work fast and work in sections. So 
working with gravity, pushing down, not letting it pull too much, mopping it up where I can, and that's it. So, the joys of uh, little sub-assembly hacks. A little bit of streaking there, I can kind of reawaken it, hopefully. But this is why you need to work quickly, section by section. If you do get pulling, make sure it's in pulling that you want. in there with a cleaned brush. I'm quickly going to dilute this and pull it off the very top areas just to make sure that he has a brighter head towards the top than the rest of him. I'll do the same on the top of the backpack as well. It's water, you can do it medium, it doesn't matter too much. Cool, that's been quite effective there. So because we had it brighter in the middle, I'm going to make sure that I end my strokes towards the edge which means that we're kind of echoing the uh, echoing the way that we painted it. And with these ones, here on the steps, because the edges are brighter, again, we're going to push upwards and we're going to end our strokes in the bits that we want the darkest. Pushing it and then lifting off where we don't want um, it to be too bright. But the same here, just hide any pooling that we get in those recess sections, very easy. Here, bright towards the top, so we end our stroke towards the bottom. I'm going to work pretty quick around these sections, then come in with a wetted brush and use that to kind of fade them out. There you go, so get that brightness towards the top that we were hoping for, on the backpack and the head mainly. Now because of that varnish step, if you did want to go back in there and push it off any of the edges, with a wetted finger you actually could, the varnish makes it kind of permanent underneath it. Shoulders are extremely important. So I'm just going to prepare a little bit of lamian, just pop it on the palette in case we need it. You could leave these separate if you wanted. So with a bit more lamian in there, the mix is slightly more dilute. So it should be a bit more forgiving to enable us to keep those bright sections if we want them. then whisk around anywhere that you've missed, which for me is always this kind of collar bit on the tops of the shoulders. Done. Detail lining time, so we're going to do something a bit weird here. We're using some sheesh purple with some lamy medium in there. Still got the same three that I was using. It's got wonderful tips, so I can use it for this type of work and it holds a lot as well, so uh, I won't have to go back to the palette very often. I'm just using this to go around details and uh, give them a nice punchy black line, and within that then I can do whatever I want, you know, color-wise for those particular pieces. If you want to do it to separate parts of the armor, it should be forgiving enough that you can do that without it being too worrying. And that'll really, really separate those panels. Any mistakes, just wipe it off. There'll be so much medium in there, proportionately it'll take quite a while to dry. So you'll have a load of time to just get a finger in there or another brush 
and wipe it off. Once more. Gotta love those big brushes. Okay, so I have gone ahead and very, very roughly blocked out the areas that are going to be different colours. So we've just used a little bit of a bad and black and then I've mixed a bad and black with dark reaper for the base coat of the, the joining sections. I've just done that to get a good idea of if the paint scheme is going to work. It's going to work. That's fine. I'm not going to do any more because the stage that we're about to do now is fairly uncontrollable. So you could leave the armor as is, you know, it looks pretty haggard. You could streak and grime it or something else. We're going to do a little bit of chipping. So I'm going to be using Rhinoxide and um, you could use a sponge or you could use a old sad brush. I'm going to carefully use um, stippling and concentrate around the edges of the armor. Just as another note, you could absolutely add bone uh, or a pastel yellow and do some edge highlighting here if you wanted, um, you know, to taste before you do this step. You could also paint these chips manually if you wanted. I'm trying to do this fairly quick though, so uh, we're going to go for rough and ready. Now what I'm going to do is put some paint on my brush and use it up to the point where it's not coming off in a uniform blob. And then we're just going to head towards the edges of our armor and go minimal on this. Okay, I'm just having too much fun weathering because it's one of my favorite things. So we're going to slow down this paint job a little bit and add a step that isn't strictly necessary at all. I'll be mixing Screaming Skull and Flash Gets Yellow. You can skip this if you want. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be picking a few of our little stippled random details and putting a little baby highlight under them or around them. So I'll try and stick to being underneath these or alongside them. I'll be putting little chips underneath it, just makes them look all uh, little, a little bit more 3D looking. And, uh, you know, I think it's quite a nice little effect to pop on there. So I'll be doing that underneath these or around them just on a few of them to, uh, to kind of draw attention to those areas specifically. So let's try that again, but quicker without having had time for tip drawing. The important part with these guys is to get a good color down rest of it after that is polishing. So all we've done here is base coat our areas with a mix of silver and black to get a dark silver. And then I've popped a little wash around those areas to kind of separate them from what they're next to. So I've dotted the rivets, a little bit faffy but worth doing. And then that's the same wash that we've put everywhere else over the silver. So the wash is actually non oil. And then we've mixed in a little bit of the purple um, that we've used before, so that's been used to dot the areas. I'll show you that now. This is a really interesting color, this contrast. Nelm oil is quite a weak color, as we've covered. So this doesn't actually end up too strong, and the purple doesn't end up dominating it either, um, which is kind of interesting. So if we go to on the rivets, got one remaining. You can just wipe off any excess. So we've done that everywhere. That wash has been placed, not with the same degree of delicacy on these areas. And then we've saved all the delicate work for the bits that matter. I've gone into these areas because it really helps push the contrast of the silver that's on top of them. And if you want to, of course, you can use it to exaggerate panel lines as well, just like we did before.
Everyone loves doing transfers in a rush, right? So they turn out pretty well, quite pleased with them, but they look far too clean. So you'll have seen that I went for the white ones uh, over the black. I actually swapped out from the black. White's very noticeable, that's why we did it, but they're in darker sections of these shin pads. If you can recall with our pre-shading, we were light here and dark here. So what we're gonna have to do is do a little bit of weathering wear and tear on them. This is pretty scary. I've hair dried them to make sure that they are set in place. So now I'm gonna very carefully scratch off, ideally just the transfer, um, not what's underneath it. So again, being rewarded for the fact that we've got a varnish step on our model. Do this with care, goes without saying. So much better. You can't have a pristine bit on a really beaten up model. It looks really weird. So we'll be taking that approach everywhere. In terms of this guy, let's, uh, let's just be brave. So I do have a wrinkle here and ideally I wouldn't want that wrinkle to exist. So it makes sense that I do some scratching around that. See my finger coming in, that's that's me wetting it and taking off the little uh, flex that you get. So yeah, we're, we're just gonna go around. Don't go too heavy. Our guy's heavily weathered, so we can go heavier than very, very light, but I know it's fun. Don't get into it and then do some irreversible stuff. Okay, so given that we've weathered this guy all over with Rhinox hide um, and uh, we've used Fire Slayer Flash Contrast on it, they need to be involved too. We've got to reflect everything that we've done on the model on the miniature, on the transfers. You could absolutely put them on earlier to avoid this, by the way. Contrast step first. Make sure that you've wiped off any of the little flex or bits that you're gonna get on it. Now our miniature does just get darker towards the bottom because of what we do with our stippling. That's gonna be hard to reflect. Maybe we can get there with a little bit of null oil or something. This step though, I'm just gonna put kind of all over and then rub off the raised upwards facing areas a bit. And with a little bit of patience going kind of backwards and forwards, doesn't have to be perfect or anything. We just need it to not look brand new. You know, like a pure white's gonna stand out a lot. Maybe I just need to have a very, very thin layer and put it all over all of it. This guy's not got Hollywood whites going on. Rhinox next. Obviously using a teeny tiny brush for this. What I'm doing here is I'm taking some of the weathering from outside of the transfer and taking it into the transfer. That's just gonna help tie it in with the area. Do little dots and bits as well if you want. And I'm a bit tempted to do a glaze of this as well. Don't thin it too much because you want these to be kind of stark and dark. I ended up getting a little bit too dilute at the end there. This one's worked out really well. Just about breaking up outlines, really. Now the same brush, the same color, the same mix. I've diluted it a lot. We've got a glaze, a Rhinox hide glaze. Hopefully we can uh, kind of fade this pad out a little bit more towards the bottom of this. Don't know if this is going to be fully successful, but we'll try. And I think on these dark bits, I just want to get all of it. That'll do. That's enough. It's not perfect, but it's absolutely fine. Other nice weathering touches. So 
What I'm going to do is I want to use Scrag for some rusting effects around the metal parts. However, we've got Scrag going on on our basing, so things are going to get a little bit confused if we were to use pure Scrag. So we're going to mix in a bit of Trollsayer Orange, which obviously we don't have anywhere else. We're not giving him red eyes, so we won't have it on the eyes. Get a very orangey version of Scrag, which is already a pretty bright warm brown anyway. And these rivets that we've dotted with our purple and black mix. Just going to pop some little rusty elements in. You can see I've done it here. Now you don't have to do it all the way around like we did with the wash. And in fact, where I have, I think that's a mistake. So I did it with a scrag mix and I'm now going in with this one. I think actually you want it kind of uneven and dotty. And don't be afraid to go for quite a bit of contrast on this. It's rust, it's going to be bright. That's absolutely fine. You could even do a pure orange version within those dots. Transfers it down, just got eyes left. I reckon we go for green. There's nowhere else on the model is going to stand out absolutely loads. And uh, with those transfers down on the white, I think um, a little bright piece to bring attention to the face in particular is going to be super important and effective. After that, we just got to tie our guy with our base. Check out our previous guys in our basing tutorial for how to achieve the Mars basing. Very easy. And uh, we're going to tie him in with that base and he'll look awesome. Okay, so time for the eyes. Got a baby brush out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute this Sotec Green quite a lot. Then we're just going to do what we've been doing on our previous guys. And underneath the eye, whether of the glow, not reflection, would appear we're going to do some quick glazes. I mean quick, these are going to dry in about two seconds. And I'm going to start our stroke outside the eye and finish it towards or in the eye. Don't worry if you get it in the eye, we've not painted it yet, so you can kind of pull there without any worry whatsoever that anything's going to go wrong or be a mistake. Remember where you end your stroke, where you lift off is where it's going to deposit the most paint opposite of a pencil where it's the lightest. Okay, so that's our glow done. Now the eyes themselves. Step one is to grab a wipe. Make sure at no point of this your brush is too wet, too much paint on there, too much water on there, and also be, be willing to tip your model upside down or whatever to be able to get access to the bits that you need to. Back to the Sotec Green. This is completely taken from Rich's tutorial, by the way. Um, the idea of using this color here. I saw his and I just thought it's amazing. So I'm going to take my time and I'll block those in. Just try and get a nice flat Sotec Green all over the lens. Pterodon Turquoise next. And like our previous ones, we're going to be pushing this up to the back corner of that lens. And the angle that I found the easiest is just to pop my guy upside down and push it into the top rear corner of the eye. So what we do with that is we basically make it look like we did a highlight with the Sotec, which we didn't, of course, GT. You can go back and need to up the turquoise if you want, or pop a little line of it at the bottom. I've just mixed a lot of Screaming Skull in with some of the turquoise. Now time for the all-important reflection dot. Pure white. And just at the back of the eye. If it is hot, then uh, make sure to wipe the tip off so you don't get tip drying. Done. If you've gone over at all, you can take something like Nelm Oil 
and then just dot it in below and redefine that line where it goes from lens to helmet. Okay, so time to plonk him on his base. I just glue one of my feet when I'm uh, putting stuff on a temporary base. Dry fit first. I just quite like it with uh, with both the tabs in the middle, so that's what we'll go for. Sometimes people ask what super guy I use. I'm using Element Games Medium here. I don't like too runny, but I also don't like too thick for this type of task. Always remind myself where we're going. Remove excess glue. Now it's time to his base. Really, I should have just done this while he was on his temporary base. I've got Scrag Brown, and then I've also got Deathclaw Brown, and I can add some Screaming Skull. They're the colors we used on the base, so it makes sense that we'll use those to keep him coherent with them. And what I'm gonna do is just water them down, and I'm gonna run them into anywhere where dust would collect. Now, if you didn't chip your feet enough, or if they look unrealistic, what I would do is anywhere you're not happy with your feet on your model, you cover over with this step. It's pretty easy, you just run stuff into the recesses. Uh, you can glaze over the entire area if you want. If you wanted that to be more dirty towards the bottom, for example. Very easy, very forgiving. Um, just uh, rock on and make sure you don't miss anywhere. It's up to you how high you take it. I'll probably take it no higher than like here. Maybe have some in the back of his knees. But I probably won't go up the model any higher than that. Okay, we're done. He looks great. Love a bit of yelling. We're done. This guy might be my favorite. I, I, I really don't know. I've really enjoyed a lot of these. And I think that probably speaks to the quality of this release as painters models. Like you start, you put down a solid base color coat, whatever that is going to be, whether it's yellow, turquoise, metallic or not. Um, and then once you've done that, you've basically done 50% of the model. All you're doing then is you're spending time on the enjoyable bits, detailing. You're not sick with the model yet. You know, you're not got bored of it. You don't have to rep out base coating trim or anything like that. You know, the worst thing you have to do is like base coat the bolter or the baubles or something really. And then you're just doing stuff that I find quite fun. So take the enjoyment of the weathering steps. Don't see them as a toll and, you know, hours you have to do. Of course, they're completely optional, but pick the ones you want to do and then just have fun with them. The more fun you have, the better they'll turn out, the more you like you guys. With models like these, because they're simple and they're clean, uh, they're not covered in doodads and watsits and, you know, 17 skulls and purity seals and like hourglasses and you know you name it all the all the crap that is put on a lot of modern models which honestly i'm not a particular fan of i like this clean aesthetic and i think that it helps showcase good solid painting really well but you don't have to put hours into the painting because you basically paint with this guy the yellow bit and then you're like i got a gun i got some eyes i got some weathering uh we put down decals done you know that's it it's awesome super fun i had loads of fun doing this um Congratulations to the winner of our contest. Sons of Horus are next. Uh, get in contact with us via social medias and we'll send you out a set and a texture palette of your choosing. The rest of you, or including the winner as well, let us know what you'd like to see next. We've got through quite a lot of the chapters now. We'll put a list of the remaining ones here, good guys, bad guys, and uh, you can pick which one. Pop it down below in the comments. Whichever one receives the most like, we will do as the next one. I'm not sure how many we'll do. So if you want a chance for us to cover your 30K chapter, get it down below and uh, make sure that you're in with a chance of us doing a tutorial.